Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Alvan, and I'm one of MBA students from IPMI International Business School. Today, I'm going to explain regarding corporate finance by Professor Roy Sembong. Corporate finance is one of the hardest subjects in my MBA program. First is financial management. What's involved financial management? It is just management of cash and money? No, actually it involves so much more than that. It's both capital structure and management, fraud and risk management, assets and liabilities management, and cash flow and revenue management. So what is financial management? Financial management is the optimal orchestration of internal and external financial resources towards significant and sustainable value creation. What are the four cornerstones of corporate finance? First is about core value. Second is conservation of value. Expected expectation treatment and the best owner. And the goals of the goals of finance firm to maximize profits and maximize shareholder wealth. And then I learned about good uh, co- uh, corporate governance. To help you remember, Professor Roy uh, giving us a really easy acronym, which is we call it TARIF. TARIF involves transparency, accountability responsibility, independency, and fairness. All of these will help to avoid issues such as the principal agent problem. Financial management involves investment such as capital budgeting, which is we analyze through an NPP or IRR payback period, profit and profitability index. Also, financing in which we study the capital structure, DMM, tax, and signaling. And finally, the dividend policy. Next is financial analysis. So the first in financial analysis is understanding of time value of money. We have a present value its value of today, this is the formula. The next is the future value of money, which is what money will be worth later on. Next, risk return trade off. According to the portfolio theory, there are two types of risk systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk is also called market risk. It is the fluctuation and return securities that occur due to the macroeconomic factors, such as politics, social issues, and economic factors. So an example is interest risk, inflation risk, and market risk. Unsystematic risk comes in the microeconomic system. Their risk factors include production of indesirable products, labor strike, so it's all within company. This involves business risk and financial risk. Then, analysis of securities. We did complete financial analysis on publicly list, publicly listed company here in Indonesia. First, technical analysis. Technical analysis involves a DuPont analysis, the expected rated and the expected rate of return of the stock, the beta, which talks about volatility, the capital asset pricing model and WACT, and the intrinsic value of stock compared to the market plus the market value stock. Every one of us did analyze five different companies, reviewed stock of company, and we tried to analyze it if it is worth buying or holding or sell. Next is fundamental analysis, consists of financial statement analysis, which is profit and loss statement, the balance sheet, cash flow statement of company, and statement of financial position. 
So analyze the statement over the last three years and find out what's going on in this company. But just looking at the financial uh, financial statement doesn't tell you much. You're going to take it step further. You must you must look at the financial ratio analysis. That's right. There are 30 different calculations. Next is uh, special topics. First, the investment simulation. In class, we are given one billion hypothetical money, and then you're going to pick up pick a uh, six different stocks to purchase and hold over the period of six weeks. Next is leverage buyout. In the case uh, in the class, we read the case RGR Nabisco, where they had a leverage buyout. Leverage buyout are very common nowadays because it's a way for a management team or another company to purchase a company using a loan or with leverage. Next is fraud risk management. Fraud risk management involves the fraud triangle. Fraud triangle involves three aspects. First is perceived opportunity. The second is rationalization. And the third is perceived pressure. In order to combat fraud, we have what's called whistleblowing. Whistleblowing is just as it sounds. You have somebody that sees some fraud going on and report it to the authorities to take corrective action. That's all from me for, uh, about corporate finance. Thank you for watching my map mapping of corporate finance. Don't forget to click a like, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you and see you in the next video.